first, we had in-person keynotes. Then we got hour plus long infomercials. But now, a whole week devoted to Mac announcements, including a complete redesign of the Mac Mini. It is very cute, but that isn't even the most exciting thing we get. So let's look at what they announced, because while the Mac Mini might be smaller, the rest of the lineup got a whole lot more capable for the money. Almost two years ago, we did a whole video about the value of the Mac Mini, saying that it's very hard to get a computer that capable for the money. This new Mac Mini is arguably an even better deal. On the Tuesday of Apple's exciting week of announcements, Apple shrunk the Mac Mini down to a 5-inch square 1.5-pound package, seemingly the size of a typical Thunderbolt dock if the power supply is built in, which it is on the Mac. It is proportionally taller than the tired previous design. Part of that height is from the distance off the table, which allows for better airflow. It's definitely an impressively densely packed machine built for Apple Silicon from the ground up. In contrast to the previous model, which reused a chassis that was designed for Intel chips and optical drives. It appears that Apple has finally pulled the plug on USB-A, as the Mac Mini no longer has them. Now there's Ethernet, HDMI, three Thunderbolt at the back, and at the front, a handy pair of USB ports beside a headphone jack. I'll be honest, part of me worries that the Mac Mini is almost too small. Apple showed examples of how people could use all that I.O. on their desk, and because the computer is so small, it could get buried or pulled around by the weight of the peripherals. As someone who loves a bit of design, it's perhaps a bit sad that the Mac Mini is losing its presence on the desk. It's why I love the iMac so much. Speaking of, on Monday, it got new colors. They are a little more saturated this time around, closer to the candy palette of Skittles. I like the previous colors, and I like these ones too. Apple has also pulled the plug on Lightning. Yes, its peripherals now charge with USB-C, and yes, you still have to flip over the Magic Mouse to do so. It also gets a new 12 megapixel center stage camera, as well as a nano texture display option, both of which are included in the new MacBook Pro. There's not much more on the MacBook Pro side, other than the fact that the base M model gets an extra Thunderbolt port and the space black option. Just joking, the most exciting thing announced applies to all Macs, which I'll tell you about after a word from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. The internet is made of websites, and if you want one, then you'll have to go to Squarespace. Their all-in-one platform makes it easy to build a beautiful, personalized website thanks to their design intelligence feature. And if you want to dip your toes in e-commerce, you can set up payments with a few clicks, offering popular methods like Apple Pay, ACH Direct Debit, Klarna, and more. Once set up, Squarespace's analytic insights will show you what's working well and what needs TLC. So get started today at squarespace.com slash Mac address and save 10% off your first purchase. I am pleased to finally report that every Mac sold from Apple from now on comes with a standard 16 gigabytes of memory. You can cheer, yes even the $1,000 M2 MacBook Air. This is a big deal because as I've noted for the past few years, eight gigabytes severely limits what you can do with your Mac. It won't even run some benchmarks. And it would be weird if you could buy a Mac that has less RAM than an iPhone 16. I thought the higher end M3 chips last year to be a bit lame with the M3 Pro's performance cores and memory bandwidth being compromised. This M4 generation looks a lot more like the original M1. Apple's humorous graph showed numbers between two and three times faster. While the typical M4 gets two more efficiency cores over the previous generation, and M4 Max core counts are unchanged, the M4 Pro gets eight performance cores in the base SKU instead of five last year. I'm very excited to see the M4 Pro get the CPU power it deserves, making it the value king in my opinion. I'm also relieved to see that the base M4 chips can now support three displays. This means that even the entry-level MacBook Pro can support two displays plus its own, finally. So where can you get all these chips? The M4 is available on the iMac, Mac Mini, and 14-inch MacBook Pro. The M4 Pro is available on the Mac Mini and MacBook Pros in both sizes, while the latter only gets the M4 Max until the Mac Studio gets updated, if it gets updated. It better get updated. Oh yeah, I guess that's also the last device to have USB-A, isn't it? Now, prices are largely the same in the lineup, so at $600, the Mac Mini looks to be incredible value. Even with the standard memory increase, RAM upgrade prices are still the same at $200 per eight gigabytes. Storage tiers remain the same too, with only 256 gigabytes standard on the iMac and M4 Mac Minis. I am concerned that this could become another unupdatable eight gig iPhone 5C situation. 
but the benefit with desktops is that they don't move, so external storage is an option. Every day in these announcements, Apple devoted a section to Apple Intelligence, the first phase of which was pushed out this week. I do intend to cover Apple Intelligence, by the way, but this rollout is quite gradual, and so I'd like some time to see how some of these more useful features integrate in my life as they roll out. Historically, Apple was very good at producing narratives to demonstrate their products in a holistic and integrated way. But with Apple Intelligence, it feels like a list of features being rattled off, and after every announcement, I'm left asking, uh, what, what can it do? This week was an interesting new way to do these announcements. Each day's videos was about 10 minutes long, so lumping it all together in one announcement would be too short. But there might be a greater advertising strategy to this too. This week, while browsing my own personal YouTube, the iMac announcement was served to me as a pre-roll ad, which of course I skipped. Already saw it. Oh yeah, and that reminds me. What do you think about that effortless power ad at the end of the MacBook announcement? I'm not sure. That was a little cheesy. And there it is, the pinky promise. Thanks for taking forever to give this Mac address enough memory. Uh, yeah, comment below what you think of that ad. And if you want to see another video we've done, since we're talking about desktops, why not watch the one where I review a Mac Studio on the beach?